Hello. In this demo, we'll be covering the denormalized transformation in Centerprise. The denormalized transformation is a data set transformation, meaning that the record must flow entirely through this transformation. Uh, you cannot go around it or you'll get a cardinality uh, error. So what the denormalized transformation does is it takes records in, in a certain format, uh, something like this, and it'll transpose them, uh, the rows of the groups of records, I should say, into a single record. So when this, when I say this is a data set transformation, this is really a data set transformation because it's taking groups of, let's, in this case, four records, and it's going to group them uh, and transpose all of these records into columns. So you get a layout that looks like this. So here you can see that we have fewer records in our data set, but we have more columns. Uh, so, for example, where we started with records that look like this, where we had amounts, uh, we had an amount column, and for uh, we had the social security number repeated n number of times. So here you see it's repeated once. Actually, if we look at the sorted value, it would be a little easier. So here you can see that the social security number is repeated four times. Uh, and, and the amount changes depending on what the social security number is. So what we want to do is we want to take this group of records uh, grouped together by social security number and create just one record out of them uh, with these values showing up in different columns. So to do that we will make use of the denormalized transformation and here you can see that this is a many to one uh, little icon here at the top left. So the way the denormalized transformation works is you set up mapping groups. So here you can see that we have group 1, group 2, group 3, and group 4 incoming into the mapping groups. So underneath the inputs you'll see that the layout is the same layout that we have for the output. So in this case we have uh, SSN, city, county, state, and federal. And here we have city, county, state, and federal. Notice that SSN does not repeat because it's a special uh, field in that it is a key field. So this is how the records are grouped together. So for that you only need to do the one mapping into that particular field. And that will show up under pivot and keys section of the tree. So um, to use the denormalized transformation you'll notice that you'll have to map into each section, uh, each group. And typically you map only once into the section and generally that's going to be the uh, the amount or some sort of value that, that con that's contained in the column that you need it to go into the different columns. So for that value you'll want to map that value at least once into each of the different uh, groups. So here you can see that the amount is mapped into uh, city for the first group, county for the second group, and state for the third group, and federal for the fourth group. And what we end up with is a data set that looks like this, where we have city, county, state, federal, city, county, state, and federal, and sometimes where we don't have uh, any match, those will be uh, blank fields uh, in, in, from the record set. So to do this, you're going to want to configure the, uh, the normalize as follows. So let me just go ahead and open this here, and this will give us the, uh, the layout and again the layout is representative of the layout we want for the output so not necessarily uh, the layout that we're getting into the input so here you can see that we have our input layout is very simple it's just two columns uh, so the layout that we want to specify is the layout that we want coming out of the denormalized transformation so in this case I have uh, five fields my key field which is SSN uh, the city the county state and the federal and this will be the columns that house the amounts coming from different records. So on the next field, we'll see that we have the two options, the create groups based on sequence and the create groups based on values in the driver fields table below. So starting off, um, we are going to use the create groups based on sequence. So what this does is this just tells you, okay, the first record that we see is going to go into the first group. The second record is going to go into the second group. So looking at the data again, you can see that we have uh, four records here with 3478. And by, by doing it by sequence, what we're saying is this value is going to go into the city amount, 
this value is going to go into the um, uh, into the county amount or the input group two, and this value input group three is going to go this 100 is going to go into input input group three and so on and so forth, uh, and and the 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 way it's transposed is done entirely by sequence of the record, and you end up with a data set that looks like this. Here you can see city, county, state, and federal. And here you see that the values are kind of messed up. So we should have 100, 200, uh, 1,021, and 10,021, I believe. Or actually, this should go in the, back, the, the end here. So in this case, we really didn't want to go by sequence. We wanted to go by driver field value. So for that, I'll show you a different data flow where we do have it set up by driver field. And the first thing you should notice is that now we have a pivot value, which was not in the other data flow. So remember in the other data flow we only had the key field SSN, not the pivot field value. So for the pivot field value, what this is, is the uh, typically you'll have some sort of field uh, indicating what type of record it is. Uh, so if I look at the data set here, you can see that I have another column here that's telling me the exact type of, of Data, uh, what type of record it is. So in this case we can see that it's county, city, federal, state, and these are the four groupings of records we have. So now I don't have to worry about the sequence. I know that when, anytime I see city, I know that this should go in the city column. Anytime I see county, this should go in the county column, state, and federal, and so on. So to do that, to make use of these values within the column, I have to map it. So here you can see that I'm mapping tax type to my pivot field value. And in my properties, uh, you see that I've chosen create groups based on values in the driver fields table below. So we still have to pick the keys. Uh, so I'm picking SSN as my key. And this time, the driver field value now, these values are going to be the values that we're re picking up on in order to map it to the appropriate group. So I've typed in city, county, state, and federal. So anytime I see those values coming in into my pivot value, I know to go ahead and trigger that mapping group. And the, and that, and the mapping that takes place will be that mapping for that group. So you can see that the names are named input city, input county, input state, input federal. So depending on what the group is, that will be the name of the of the particular node in the tree. Contrast that with the sequence and you'll see that you just have the generic group 1, group 2, group 3, group 4. So this gives you a little bit of a hint of where to map the fields. So and once you have the input groups mapped, you can just map the output uh, as normally you would with any other uh, uh, about destination here. So I'm going to go ahead and start from scratch and uh, denormalize this the particular data set that we've seen before. So I'm going to go to the toolbox into the transformation section and I'm going to look for the denormalized transformation. I'm going to drag and drop that onto the diagram and this will give me the blank denormalized transformation with only two input groups and by default by sequence. I'm going to go ahead and change this to by driver field since it's more reliable. So I'm going to open the properties and the first thing I'm going to do is type my layout name. So I'm going to go SSN, which is my key field, which I need. And I'm going to go city. In this case, I'm just going to go the first two letters, S-I-C-I-C-O, uh, S-T, and F-E, which will be my record types, or my columns, I should say. Click OK. I'll actually go next. Uh, and I'm going to change the create groups based on driver fields. So here, I'll click that and click SSN. Okay, now uh, one caveat is that this transformation requires all values to be sorted. So you're going to want to at least either check the sort input or have a sort transformation preceding it. So now I'm just going to set the driver field values. In this case, there are city, county, state, federal. Oops, I misspelled it. And it's important that you spell it right because it's going to trigger based on the value you put in here. So if these don't match up, you will not trigger that mapping group. So click OK. So now I have my four input groups and I'm going to first map the keys and the pivot value. So the key is easy. I'm just going to map SSN to SSN. 
the pivot value is going to be the, the, the field that contains the value. Whenever we see the different value in that field, it, we're going to trigger that map type. So I'm going to take this from tax type will be my pivot value. Uh, and when we see the value city, I'm going to map it to the amount so that the value contained in that uh, for that record in, into the particular column. So in this case, CI. And let me just make this a little larger. Uh, and for the anytime we see county, I'm going to map it to CO. Anytime we see the value state, I'm going to map it to ST. And anytime I see the value federal, I'm going to map the amount to FE. So that should give me my data set looking good. And then I'm just going to map to the appropriate output as I normally would. Oops, state and federal. Preview my data. And now I've taken that data set and I've norm uh, denormalized it from many records. And now we only have one record with a social security number, but of many columns. And that's how you use the denormalized transformation in Centerprise.